Sunday's newspaper this past Sunday as I like to read the paper every day and started in to read and thumbed through the paper and uh, got to page B4 and there was a picture that caught my attention. Here, here's a copy of the picture uh, of a man. His name is uh, Terrell McNeil. And I looked at that picture and I read the headlines and the headline says, Police seek man who removed monitor. Fayetteville police are looking for a man who removed an electronic monitoring device and fled. Terrell B. McNeil, 28, whose address was not given, was wearing the ankle monitor as a condition of pretrial release, having been charged with robbery with a dangerous weapon. And the article goes on, tells a little bit about it and how he's fled. And, and I looked at that picture and I thought, you know what? Why would a man who is intent on a life of crime make it so easy to identify who he is when he commits a crime? Really? Tattoos on his face. And, and I looked at that, and if I'm not mistaken, right on his forehead, he's got lost soul written up there. Oh, got a star mercy. between his eyebrows, stars across another, things around his neck. And I'm thinking, you don't have to remember the man's five foot nine inches tall. You don't have to remember he weighed 150 pounds. You don't have to remember he has dark hair. You don't have to remember he got a mole on his left arm. All you have to do is say, he's the man with tattoos on his face, and everybody will know who you're talking about. That's right. <laughs> have you ever seen any of the dumb convicts or dumb criminal stuff? Go to YouTube. It, it, it will delight you to look at how dumb some people. <laughs> I was looking at one the other day, this guy. He runs into a bank to rob the bank. Somebody presses the button and all the teller doors just close shut. And he flies to the door to go out and pushes the door and find out he cannot push the door because you're supposed to pull it in. And he stayed trapped in the bank with the door unlocked until the police arrived and they just push the door open and arrest the man. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you. Anybody here ever been in jail? Anybody? Uh, Cassie, you raising your hand? You've been in jail? Yeah. No, no. Anybody? Ever, you've been in jail. You've been in jail. The minister. Brother Larry's been in jail. I just found out my wife's been in jail. The minister. <laughs> I've been in jail, but as a minister, <laughs> going to minister to others, I've been into a number of jails and prisons in both South Carolina and Mississippi over the years and ministered that, listen, uh, uh, one of the first dates that Catherine and I went on was to a prison for prison ministry in Allendale, South Carolina. You know a man desperate when he takes a date to the prison. <laughs> But let me tell you, when you go to a prison and that door behind you with bars swings shut and you hear that clink, it'll do something to you. It don't sound like that sound, let me tell you. And when you go in there as a minister, and I've been in some prisons, they wouldn't even let me take my Bible in. You know, they, they, you have to leave everything behind. Your keys, your wallet, everything has to be left behind. And when that door clinks shut, in my mind, I'm always thinking, I hope they don't forget who I am and I'm supposed to get out of here in a little while. I want to tell you the story of a certain prisoner in a certain prison. Now, this man was a rebel in revolt against civil authority. He was a rabble rouser. He was a thief. He was a notorious leader in trying to overthrow the government. He was a murderer. I mean, you name it, he had done it. And his name was known to everybody in the country. He was notorious. Everybody knew who he was. And now he found himself in prison on death row, just waiting for the day when they're going to cart him away and it's going to be the end of his life. He's led a horrible life. And finally, after who knows how long, that fateful day arrived, 
and footsteps could be heard coming down the stone hallway. And a key finally turns in the prison door lock where he is being held. The door swings open and hardened soldiers and prison guards put him in shackles and pushes him forward through the door to walk him out of his prison cell. Who knows what kind of thoughts are going through his mind, but obviously this is the day his death sentence would be carried out. A large, unruly crowd's outside, and he can hear them outside the prison of all kinds of noise and commotion going on. Let me tell you something. Murderers and thieves and rebels and rabble rousers don't have many friends. And there was a crowd outside. You could hear them everywhere. And this prisoner then is taken before that large crowd that's assembled early in the morning bright sun. This man's name was Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Some manuscripts give his name as Jesus Barabbas. Barabbas, when you look at the definition of what Barabbas means, it means son of a father. And perhaps his father was one of the Jewish leaders. We don't know. We don't have that information. But he was son of a father. Could be anybody, in other words. Just kind of a generic name. And it was a custom... Excuse me, it was a custom in that time that before the feast of Passover, that the Roman governor would release a Jewish prisoner as an act of goodwill toward the Jews whom he governed. The people were given a choice. And the choice on this day could not have been more clear cut. On the one side was a teacher and a miracle worker who was unquestionably innocent. Right. On the other side was a high profile killer, murderer, rabble rouser, who was unquestionably guilty. The choice was between Jesus Barabbas, the son of the father, and Jesus Christ, the son of the father, the son of God. Yes. One of the two would go to the cross, and Barabbas has all the reasons to be on that cross that day. The cross for him is the logical end. And that's where what his lifestyle and the things that he did in this life, that's where it was going to take him, to the cross. And this was the day his death sentence would be carried out. But the people cried out for Barabbas to be released and Jesus to be crucified. Not once, not two times. Three times they cry out, crucify Jesus. What should we do with this man? Crucify him. Barabbas, 